Hi, I'm Mishdi Max, and I'm here to share what I'd call a festival survival guide plus makeup tutorial. This is part one of a two-day Soundwave festival, where I especially went to see Judas Priest and Marilyn Manson. I based my makeup on the colors I think of for these bands, which is reds and blacks, and I wanted to go dark and gothic for Manson, with a twist of pink into the makeup too. So off we go! The most important step is to apply earbuds to your ear canals to let the music fuel your creativity. Then we move on to skin preparation. I'm using these simple sensitive skin cleansing facial wipes to remove the excess oil and sweat off my face as it is super hot today. You want to start with a clean surface to make sure your makeup stays on all day. Then I'm doing some eyebrow tidy up, plucking a few stray hairs with my zebra shaped manicure tweezers. I used La Roche-Posay Thermal Spring Water to spritz my face for some hydration and let that dry a little. Then I moisturized with Embryolisse Lathe Creme Concentrate to help prime and also keep my skin fresh. For under the eyes, I use MAC Prep and Prime Vibrancy Eye Primer which also stops concealer creasing but make sure you don't use too much. I grabbed my Bepanthan ointment and lathered that all over my lips to hydrate and prepare them for the dark lips to come. I took and shook up my La Roche-Posay Anthelios XL50 Plus Very High Protection Sunscreen, rubbed that between my fingers and smeared that all over my face and neck to protect my skin during this brutally hot summer day. This is a very important step, and don't worry I haven't forgot, I'll get to the rest of the body later. Then I wiped that grease off my fingers to start the makeup tutorial. I primed my eyes with Too Faced Shadow Insurance to ensure the eyes stay put taking that all the way up to the brows and under the eyes too. For an eyeshadow base, I'm taking the Makeup Geek Gel Eyeliner in Poison, dipping my finger into the red shade and applying it over my lid. Then I'm taking the Real Techniques Base Shadow Brush to blend that up to the crease. After a little visit, I keep dabbing it on and layering the gel eyeliner to intensify the color and blend as I go. Then I remove any base that got down too far with a makeup wipe. And I make sure I have a good gradient from lash line to just above my crease. Next comes out the Naked 3 palette from Urban Decay and I'm using the Sigma F70 concealer brush to pick up the shadow black heart and apply that to the outer and inner third of my eyelid. It's a matte black shadow with red slash pink sparkles and I'll make sure to intensify that later with a sticky base after a bunch of blending. I joined up each side of my eyelid through the crease to create a halo effect. Then with the blending side of the brush that came with the Naked 3 palette, I took Limit into my crease to act as a transition shade, also pushing that up into the beginning of my eyebrow. I went back to the same palette to take some strange to slap on as my brow highlight with the same brush. This is also to help with blending. Then I increased the depth of limit in my inner crease. I took the Sigma E50 Large Fluff Brush and some Strange to erase and blend the outer corner and through the crease. Then I whipped out the Sugar Pill Pressed Eyeshadow in Bulletproof and the Sigma E47 Shader Crease Brush to define the crease and add some matte black darkness. I used this tiny pointed crease brush to buff some black into the crease as I rocked out to some hailstorm. Then since my sugar pill order hadn't arrived yet, I tried to create this facsimile of the Countess pigment with alchemy and much magic. I wiped some Firene Pixie Epoxy on the back of my hand and applied it to the center of my eye as a sticky base using my finger and then I took the MAC 242 Flat Stiff Brush to apply the magically mixed pigment to the center of my eye where there was no shadow thus far. I patted it on for the best pigmentation. If you're wondering what is in this mix, check my blog below. I began blending with the Sigma F70 concealer brush and then decided to use Pixie Epoxy to get the glitter particles in Blackheart to stick better and I used the same brush to pack on the Blackheart shadow. Then I also got down to the business of blending either side of the central metallic shadow into the blackened edges, also using the MAC brush with the residual fake counters on it, plus running the tiny pointed crease brush around the border of the halo to help fade that into the rest of the crease. As usual, it's a process, and when I was happy with the intensity of the shadows and blend, I went on to the next step in the crease. Out comes the Urban Decay Electric Palette, and I chose the shadow Savage with the Sigma E60 Blending Brush to buff the neon pink shadow above the black in the crease, laying down the start of the pink gradient. 
For a darker hot pink shade, I whipped out the Sugar Pill Sweetheart palette and went for Dolly Pop and used the same brush to transition the black upwards while not achieving purchase on my brush the whole time. But either way, I darkened up the pink haze around the dark shadows, keeping a round but lifted shape to the eye. I went back between Bulletproof on the pointed brush and the soft dome brush to get a perfect fade, going all around the eye from outer edge to inner corner. Then I add more Dolly Pop with the domed brush and also Savage to bring back the pink haze, taking that high up onto the brow bone. I grabbed some more Strange on the big fluff brush to brighten under the brow and also to tone that down, helping the blend. Then I took a mix of both Limit and Nuna from the Naked 3 palette and deepened up that sunken inner socket area, taking it towards my nose bridge and blending the other side into the pink too. Next I grabbed Inglot Matte Gel Eyeliner in number 77 with the Sigma E17 Waterline Liner Brush. Ran that along my tight line, wiggling the brush between the lashes. Then I lined around my tear duct with the gel liner and created a nice point. I wiped off any fallout with a makeup wipe and shaped the shadow while rocking out. I got out MAC Lip Pencil in Night Moth and sharpened it to sterilize and clean it from use on the lips and ran it along my waterline and into the lashes then along the lash line too for an experimental funky shade there. I'm slightly pulling down on the skin but not stretching it to get the color in there but good. I'm taking a great smudging tool, the cotton bud and blending out the edge of the Night Moth pencil, then intensifying the product again. I took some more Limit to blend out the lower lash line with the same blending side of the Naked 3 brush. Then I followed that up with some Savage to blend under the Night Moth pencil and built that color up while blending it out. To match the top pink fade, I went in with Sugar Pill Dolly Pop again on the same brush, deepening up the color and joining that up to the top lid. I'm blending that out with the leftover limit on the brush and then I reshaped and removed the overhang of shadow. Now for some more darkness, I took some Sugar Pill Bulletproof on a Sigma E30 pencil brush to darken along the lash line and join it up to the deep crease and then blend that out with the ever useful tiny fluffy brush. I went back in with Strange again to erase any unwanted shadow and fade it into my skin with the big fluff brush to keep the rounded shape but make it angled up for a more attractive look. You know the name of the game is blending. And then I performed a fantastic move of smearing black eyeshadow on my face. Ugh, classic. And so I cleaned up my cheek and also my hand. Then I pointed up the tear duct some more with the gel eyeliner and blended that across with some matte black eyeshadow on the pencil brush. I brutalized the pink some more with more Dolly Pop and Savage to get a nice sickly Marilyn Manson-esque look around the eyes with the color aggressively pigmented and not forgetting to keep the blend fiercely soft all around the eye socket. Then I curled my lashes thoroughly at the base and the middle for more lift and applied a buttload of CoverGirl Clump Crusher mascara, really working that into the roots of the top lashes, combing through a decent amount of product, about three layers I'd say, and coating the lower lashes as well, getting to that just right clumpy look. I personally added an extra step of fanning my steaming face, trying to endure this temperature. Then since I wiped my face, I reapplied the sunscreen. I rehydrated with a spritz of thermal spring water and went onto my brows with the Benefit Browsings in light, starting with the wax side through the tail of my brows. Then I took the powder through the whole brows, combed them through with a spoolie and then ran Benefit Gimme Brow in light slash medium to set the hairs in place. For the face, I primed with Benefit Professional, mainly around the center, blending it outwards. Then used Bourjois Healthy Mix in 51 Light Vanilla for foundation. And for a light finish, I sprayed my Sedona Lace 928 Synthetic Flat Top Brush with some MAC Fix Plus to sheer it out because I didn't want my face to be heavy or show any signs of loss of coverage from being in the pit. Make sure not to throw the brush at your face though, because damn that hurts. And after I finished buffing that in, I covered up my dark circles with MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC15 and used the excess around my nose and on any blemishes using the synthetic small tapered 224 brush from Sedona Lace and buffed that in with my foundation brush. Then I got out my lovely Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light and set under my eyes and the center of my face with the Real Techniques setting brush giving a light glow without shine, buffing that out again with an angled brush and I set the rest of my face with Revlon Photo Ready Translucent Finisher and the Sigma F30 Large Powder Brush 
to make sure my face stays in place until I want to take it off. Then I went in with the wax side of my eyebrow kit to enhance my beauty spot, patting that product in. I decided to do something a little different for contour, so I took the eyeshadow limit on the Naked 3 blending brush, taking that down the sides of my nose, following along where I buffed that up to the start of my brows and inner socket. Then I blended out the edges of the eyeshadow with my brow highlight strange. And I went in to limit again on the Real Techniques contour brush to skull fuck my face, also known as contouring. I took it under my cheekbones, into my temples and around my forehead to match the pinkish tones in my makeup. I deepened that up with the other matte shadow in the Naked 3 palette called Nuna, but not buffing that out as far. And I softened that with my powder brush. I went back into the Sweetheart palette and took the matte white shadow, Taco, to highlight my cheekbones and lighten up my complexion using the Sigma E40 Large Angled Brush, blending it down into the contour and sharpening it up on the underside to exaggerate the face carvage. The Sweetheart palette is ever useful again and I used the same matte pink shadow from the crease, Dolly Pop, and softly blended that onto the backs of my cheekbones with the Napoleon Paradis 20B Reflective Contour Brush, making sure to dab it off on the back of my hand so it isn't too bright. I deepened the contour to bring it back because it got lost in the blending, increased the highlight and also demured down the cheeks with some of that Revlon powder. Another step to concrete on my face, the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray, spritzing on a healthy amount. I cleaned the foundation and powder off my lips with the oil-free Garnier Makeup Remover and a cotton bud to prepare them. Then I primed my lips with MAC Prep and Prime Lip Base to prevent feathering. I took out the MAC Pigment in Vanilla for a Cupid's Bow Highlight and applied that with my finger giving a golden pinkish shine. Then to start on the lip colour I took the Urban Decay 24-7 Eye Pencil in Perversion and lined the perimeter of my lips with a sharp Cupid's Bow and angular shape. Then I shaded in the corners and thickened up the edge line, leaving a space in the center for a two-toned lip to come. Then I went back to the MAC Lip Pencil in Night Moth, but this time I filled in the space on the center of my lips, blending it into the black on the outer edge. Next, the black lipstick I used was Melt Cosmetics Bane, a matte black affair, and I ran that into the corners and around the edge of my lips with the point of the bullet. You could use a lip brush if you wanted, but my tube is fresh and pointy enough. Then I pulled out Black Metal Dahlia, one of the metallic OCC lip tars. I squeezed some out on the back of my hand, then used a lip brush to apply it to the center on top of Night Moth, patting it to blend the metallic lip tar with the matte black lipstick, and I finger popped to save my teeth. After I finished adding product, since I wanted my eyes to match my lips, I went back to the pigment I used on the center of the lid, and I patted it over the lip tar with the same MAC 242 brush. I went back in to make sure the corners were black enough with the Bane lipstick and then I got out bulletproof eyeshadow again with the E30 pencil brush and set the lipstick making it a really really matte black around the perimeter to make sure it lasts through screaming along to Halford and Manson. I popped out my drays and arranged my twists and that's the end of this dark and gothic makeup look. I think the pigment I mixed together looks pretty close to the maroon kind of pinky shade just like the sugar pill countess I was trying to emulate and I was really happy with the dramatic matching eyes and lips. And I thought it was perfect for a Marilyn Manson show, especially since I was in one of my dark moods. <laughs> then we can't forget about the body skin prep, so I whipped out this Obagi Nudome SPF 50 Sun Shield, and I applied that all over my exposed skin. Pay special attention to the tops of your shoulders and your chest, because you don't want to mess up your delicate skin with fucked up evil UV rays there. It's a big problem here since Australia pretty much has zero ozone layer. And for a little something special, I used the limited edition Body Shop Glazed Apple Lotion, which is shimmery and kinda glittery as you see here. I thought a sassy shiny set of arms and decolletage would be fun for a day gig. I did end up smearing it over my dress here and there and it would have been a better idea to do it pre getting dressed but eh we learn from our mistakes. And then here we have my outfit which ended up being this t-shirt dress with the crisscross aeration about the waist because it was a mother of a steaming hot day as I said. The gothic corset tutu dress I wanted to wear was severely claustrophobic at this temperature. I attempted a test run in the front driveway with some jump Jumping jacks and various running around, and finally I decided to be sensible and go with the lighter option you see here. 
I always say it is essential to grab a souvenir to remember the gig by, or any bit of memorabilia that catches your eye at any gig. So I bought this Judas Priest t-shirt with the classic British steel artwork, although they added the details of fun bright colours and the gorgeous metallic on the razor. I had such a blast at Soundwave, and I can't wait to go next year. And now I definitely know it's necessary to grab a Slurpee before you hit your spot on the gig if the sun is beating down on you that fucking hard. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this festival guide and makeup tutorial part one. And don't forget to check out my day two makeup and subscribe for more videos. Boop. Click the little boxes if you want to see all the tutorials. And here's a little taste of my experience. Don't tell anyone I shared.